Hey, good evening. Welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry, and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. Hey, we've been in the study of Matthew 16, 27, and 28 for a handful of weeks. I think we've done 28 videos. And tonight, I want to uh, take, take a video and do a recap of the information we've covered up to this point. Uh, number one, we, we identified Matthew 16, 28, 728, at face value as a second coming eschatological prophecy. It concerns the coming of the Lord in judgment for the resurrection and to establish the kingdom which Jesus placed in the lifetime of his first century generation. That means that the second coming of Christ and the fulfillment of all prophecy, the eschaton, must have taken place in the first century generation. And to begin to vindicate that, we looked at the immediate context of Matthew 16, 27, 28. And we saw that this coming of the Son of Man in the glory of the Father to reward every man according to his deeds was a vindicative coming judgment. That is, he was coming to judge those who had crucified him, who had persecuted his disciples, and in doing so, he would bring vindication to himself and his disciples. And that was specifically in fulfillment of Psalm 2 and Psalm 110. From there, we began to look at the the, the core Old Testament sources for the specific prophecy in Matthew 16, 27, and 28. And those Old Testament prophecies uh, were Daniel 7, Isaiah 59, Isaiah 40, and Isaiah 62. And significantly, all of those Old Testament prophecies, number one, were parallel thematically to Matthew 16, 27, and 28. But number two, all of those Old Testament prophecies prophesied the second coming of Christ. Now, that's significant. From there, what we did is we, we dove in and we took a, a closer look at each one of those prophecies. If you recall in Daniel 7, we looked at the times, time and a half a time that uh, surrounds the coming of the Lord. We also looked at the time when the saints received the kingdom. Uh, and in Daniel 7, both of those themes or those elements uh, take place in the context of the Lord's coming in judgment. That is the second coming of Christ. Which means, uh, sorry, and, and both those elements, according to Jesus, were fulfilled at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70, placing the coming of the Son of Man in Daniel 7 at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. The second uh, New Test or Old Testament source we looked at was Isaiah 59. And re recall, we took a closer look at that and we looked at the vengeance for shedding innocent blood and the time for the establishment of the new covenant. Both those themes and elements... Uh, were surrounding the coming of the Lord to Zion in Isaiah 59. And once again, according to the New Testament, specifically Jesus and Paul, the coming of the Lord for to, to vindicate and to take vengeance for shedding innocent blood and the coming of the Lord to establish the kingdom was fulfilled at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70, which means the coming of the Lord in Isaiah 59 was fulfilled at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. Our third and fourth Old Testament sources, which were Isaiah 40 and Isaiah 62, we looked at those as well, and we saw that the, the, the elements of the time of the Messianic regathering of Israel and the time for the Messianic remarriage of Israel, both of which take place at the coming of the Lord, were fulfilled, according to Jesus, at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70, which means, once again, that the coming of the Lord in Isaiah 40 and Isaiah 62 must have taken place at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. All of those Old Testament prophetic sources and the elements surrounding the coming of the Lord in those passages were fulfilled at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. Here's our conclusion based upon the information and the studies that we've done so far. The coming of the Lord, that is the coming of the Son of Man, in Matthew 16, 27 and 28, was, was uh, drawn from Daniel 7, Isaiah 59, Isaiah 40, and Isaiah 62. But the coming of the Lord in all of those Old Testament passages prophesied the second coming of Christ, which the elements of those passages place at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. That means that the coming of the Son of Man in Matthew 16, 27, and 28, in fulfillment of the coming of the Lord in Daniel 7, Isaiah 59, Isaiah 40, and Isaiah 62, must have taken place at the fall of Jerusalem 
in AD 70. Just like those Old Testament sources demand and just like Jesus promised. Verily I say unto you, some of those standing here will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Matthew 16, 27 and 28 prophesied the second coming of Christ in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy and it was fulfilled at the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. That is simple, that is irrefutable, that is good stuff. And it vindicates our Lord Jesus and his promises and the pro promises of the apostles and prophets. Now, where we're going to go in our next videos is we're going to begin to look at the New Testament writers' uh, uh, t uh, prophecies. And we're going to see that they, just like the Old Testament prophets, those New Testament writers drew upon Matthew 16, 27, 28, and they used that prophecy to prophesy the second coming of Christ, which they anticipated in their own lifetime. Let me say it another way. Uh, Matthew 16, 27, 28 would fulfill Old Testament prophecy, but Matthew 16 and 27 and 28 would also fulfill New Testament prophecy. Both Old Testament prophecy and New Testament prophecy draw from and, and point to Matthew 16, 27, and 28 as the definitive source for the second coming of Christ. And just like the Old Testament prophets, the writers of the New Testament prophets place that coming in judgment to establish the kingdom and to vindicate the saints in the lifetime of their own generation. It's going to be good. Don't miss the study. We'll see you next time on Answers on Eschatology. Have a great rest of your weekend. Bye for now.